Freedom's the answer. What's the question? You're listening to Ernest Hancock. They'll just surrender, it won't hurt. They'll just sit back, you know, and let the state do you, you know, or not. You know, this is one thing that I wanted to uh, give uh, Ethan an opportunity. They have a, a special package, and then I, you know, give them an opportunity to do a little promo here for that. And then I got to, you know, for letting them do that, and then I got a mission for Ethan for me to do, okay? Ethan, go, man, go. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, if you want to register for Park Fest, go to registration.porkfest.com. There's a coupon code, capital letters, PF2011, Ethan. You get a 20% off discount, which is $5 off your ticket. And the proceeds also go to benefit Morgan, which is Allison's daughter, uh, granddaughter of Karen and Bob Emery of Del Valley Silver. A couple months ago, Allison was murdered by a serial killer, and she was a close friend of mine. So I wanted to do something in order to help her out, and I thought this would be a good way to raise some money for her to... For her future. PF That's PF 2011, 2011 Ethan. PF2011 Ethan when you register. All capital letters. Oh man, you're making it complicated. Okay. Capital letters. PF2011 capital E T H A N all caps. And now you do that when you register at where? Registration.porkfest.com. Registration dot dot porkfest dot com and uh i now this is what i need you to do for me all right i got yes, an email you ready you ready ready here we yep. go nick barnett just sent me an email he said there's an activist in new hampshire that's also a co-host on free talk live i sent her a message on facebook but i haven't heard back from her yet she was married to an egyptian for i think seven years and i believe he went back to egypt Maybe you can get the Porkfest guys to ask her or get Ian to ask her, or maybe just get her email address from one of them and contact yourself. She talked about her Egyptian ex-husband. She has three children with him. And uh, on Corey Moore's radio show this weekend, you know, it might be a good contact for us. And he's calling it Operation Sphinx, Phoenix to Sphinx. Yeah, there's something catchy in there, but I haven't found it yet. So we're going to be, you know, working this. Oh, yeah, we got, you know, Freedom's Phoenix. Well, they certainly understand the concept of the Phoenix and, you know, going to the Sphinx. So if you have anybody there that knows anybody that knows anybody in Egypt, I need addresses. Okay? That's your. We'll do. I'll send them all next way. Your job address. You know, get well, Nick, me, whatever. He'll wind up sending it to me. But I need the addresses of these packets that we're sending to them. Okay? We'll do. All right, man. It's Michelle cool. Seven, and so she'll probably have all the contact info. All right, cool. Thanks, Ethan, for coming on. And that is PF, capital letters, PF2011, Ethan, all caps, when you go to registration.porkfest.com, right? Yep. 20% discount. The code to use. All right, cool. Thanks, Ethan. We'll talk to you later, man. No problem. See you later. Now, let me see if I can do the buttons, put in, do, point, hang, whatever. That's Sierra's job. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to talk about this uh, at, you know, for the rest of this segment here. What I wanted to bring up was uh, the geography and the demographics and so on comparing Egypt to what we have here. Now, let me – got to be able to do this somehow, conference – to push button off, hang up. I did it. Yay, I know how. That's the phone system here. Sierra's out doing some packing and so on. She's helping me with this. Now, if you look at Egypt in the square miles of the size of this thing, it's about 386,000 square miles. If you take Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah, the four corner states, If you take them and you got that big block there, Egypt just fits inside that square. So if you wanted to get the kind of the concept of the size of Egypt, it's about the size of the four corner states, you know, where they have uh, four corners that meet. That's Arizona, New Mexico on the bottom, then Utah and Colorado on the top. Egypt would fit in that square just barely. So 
This is the size of, uh, it's not a small country, it's one of the larger ones. And in that area, we're here between all three of these states. I'll bet you there's probably not 15, 20 million people that live in these four states. New Mexico, all of Arizona is probably one of the more populous states, and there's 6 million people here. So I'll bet you it's under 20 million people in that area. Egypt has about 84 million. So it's about four times as populous, and it has a lot of desert. So what does that tell you? I think there's, heck, man, you know, half of that or a third of that is just in Cairo area. So it's because of the Nile. The Nile is fed from the south and it empties into the Mediterranean. And that Delta Valley there, that flooding that happens on an annual basis, that's what fed all the people that made the pyramids. Now, a lot of people will uh, come up with the idea that they were slaves, and I'm sure they they lived under a tyrannical pharaoh rule. But, uh, you know, if you're feeding me and uh, I'm not getting fed anywhere else, well, guess what? I'm making bricks for you. So this is a very concentrated population that represents such a large swath of the Arabic-speaking countries. Now, what a lot of people, and certainly you're never going to get out of Fox or CNN or MSNBC, you're not going to get out of them the fact that there is an entirely new generation that's coming into existence with communication with their peers around the world. This is not recognized enough, in my opinion. Because I was so affected by technology and the ability to communicate as a young activist in the mid-90s, I understood back then what was going to happen as more and more people were starting to become aware of this ability to bypass this this filtered information house of the, the government and the government controlled and regulated and licensed media that they were going to be able to just do the Wayne's world thing from their basement and, you know, grandma, you know, what's her name in a Cairo. And this is happening now as they're trying to depict this entire thing as being how long can poor people <clears throat> wanting to be represented by themselves Stick it out in the middle of some square in Cairo as if that is the revolution. That's the concept that they want you to. This is it. This is it. It lives or dies by how many people can live or die in this square. Really? How'd that work out for China? Of course they did the Tiananmen Square tank rolling in, get rid of uh, Muamover kind of thing. And then what happened? This is... What I think they understand to avoid in Egypt, if they roll in with the tanks, if they start machine gunning, if they start laying waste to the people there, it's it's not going to work out for them. Of course, they go, uh, we win by conquest and force on our own people. That's not going to go over well. I anticipate and I would if I was advising the Egyptian government and cared about them, just wait them out. You know, let them do whatever, and you go pick them off one at a time with your little secret police when they go home kind of deal, because that's what's going to happen. These people have put their lives on the line. They know it's it's over for them, because if they stay in Egypt, they will be found. They will be arrested. They will be tortured. They will be killed. They will be sentenced. This is what happened in China. So I'm going, all right. You know, if they can avoid a big, giant public display using their smartphone to, you know, document everybody that they laid waste to, you know, they're probably better off than not. But it's a stop. They're going to be, what is the thing that can be done for these people? Is that as individuals, they don't need to be out in the middle of everything, standing there, which sooner or later eventually always comes down to that. But, you know, I'm of the opinion it always comes down to, you know, Getting rid of the bad guy's ability to tell you what to do, and that might turn to violence. But way, way before that is just representing with an idea, a concept, artwork, a logo, a slogan. These are the things that make revolutions into movements, what's even more powerful and a prerequisite to a revolution. We'll talk about some more stuff when we come back.